One of the largest issues that breaks Final Cut Pro plugins typically comes down to a versioning issue. For example, if I were to build a brand new template in Apple Motion 5.7, but you were in Final Cut Pro 10.4, that plugin would most likely be broken and give you the red screen of death. Now for a while, I was using a really great website called fcpxtemplates.com. They have an Apple Motion template backdater on there. However, there are some limitations. For example, you can only upload a single file at a time. That is where this really incredible application comes into play, pfixer. Now this video is not sponsored. I do not get any affiliate commissions if you use the link down below and I purchased it with my own money. It's just a really amazing piece of software that I think a lot more people should be aware Aware of. So I'll go ahead and open up pfixer. It's got a very simple interface. You can see that you can input your license code here and whenever you run the software you can see it creates a backup of whatever the previous version of that Apple Motion template was which is really a great thing to have. And then finally here on the fix screen which is what you'll always be greeted with you can go ahead and import your Apple Motion templates. I'll go ahead and press select because I don't want to import all of my motion templates at once. So we'll push select. We can go to our effects. I can scroll down down, maybe we'll do something like my FCB's clone stamp tool. And you'll notice that I can go ahead and just select this topmost folder, which is super, super valuable. And I'll get into that in just a second. From there, we can come down to the bottom and the conversion can be set to auto. This is great if you're only going to use this plugin on your own computer. It's going to use whatever version of Final Cut Pro you have as the version it's going to set that motion template to. However, if you're like me and you're consistently distributing plugins to many other people, you can come down and select custom FCPX version. In here, we have the option to go all the way from version 10 to 10.6. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 10.4. It's just going to be important that I am aware of what is inside this Apple Motion template and that it works with the older versions of Final Cut Pro. For example, there is an effect called the stroke effect in Apple Motion. This was introduced in version 10.4. However, it is not available in Final Cut Pro 10.3. So that plugin still would not work. Keep that in mind when you are backdating plugins, maybe you need the latest version of Final Cut Pro for it to work. But if that's not the case, then frequently this can resolve your plugin issues. Underneath that, if you want to get really technical, you can set a custom OZML number. This is for a more technical audience that knows what they're doing. I'm not gonna get into the whole OZML number right now, but over here on the right, you can also see there's this fix missing media links. I imagine it does exactly what it said, but I really don't quite understand what it's doing there. So unfortunately, I can't provide any additional info in that area. Once you've gone ahead and imported your clip and you've set the version that you want to work with, all you need to do is push fix. It's going to very quickly create a backup and then it's going to fix the OZML number in each of these versions of the template. From there, we can push OK. But the real power of this application is that you don't just need to do one plugin at a time you can do hundreds at a time. So if I go into my selection folder, I go to my effects and I'll just look up my motion tools plugin, which has over a hundred different effects and tools for Final Cut Pro. I'll have a link down below to that. You can see inside of this folder that I have all of these different plugins, all of these plugins, these plugins, these plugins, tons and tons of different templates that I need to publish over to Final Cut Pro at an older version. So rather than individually uploading each of these different effects, I can go ahead and just select the topmost folder, the motion tools folder, I'll push choose, it'll import that, it'll create a backup of it, I can go ahead and set the custom version that I want to use, and then I can push fix. Now, because I'm relying on newer elements from newer versions of Final Cut Pro for this specific plugin, unfortunately, it only works with 10.6, but pfixer will go ahead and attempt to fix it, and a lot of the other plugins that are not relying on new versions of Final Cut Pro will still work totally fine. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that subscribe button as I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Also, you may want to check out this video where I show you a whole bunch of different ways you can fix plugins for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.